Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boys, Jack and David, here at the Irish Hotspur, here to announce the Ivan Perisic signing. Here we go. Has been announced from Fabrizio Romano. This is just going to be kind of a quick breakdown as to what Ivan Perisic will bring to Spurs. He's probably going to be Spurs' new left wing back. Signed on a free, everybody, so we didn't really have to pay any transfer fee whatsoever. He's going to be here on a two-year contract for six million pounds. I think someone calculated it to being somewhere around 100000 a week or something like that. Not even too, too much when you really think about it. Uh, but let's break down uh, maybe just a bit of background information on Perisic before we get David's very excited thoughts on the guy. Uh, born in Split, Croatia. Uh, heard a beautiful uh, vacation destination. Uh, 33 years old. Born in 1989, which <laughs> really shows you uh, how old he is. And I think he was born, you know, when... Uh, Croatia was still a part of Yugoslavia as well. So that's how old the guy is. Uh, six feet, one inches, which is actually a lot taller than most you kind of fullbacks, even uh, forwards in general. Plays as a left wing back, can play as a left winger, can play as a striker, can play as a right winger, basically can play across the forward line and then also play as a left wing back. He's been playing more left wing back recently. Uh, of course, played for, you know, splits kind of, you know, very big team. I think it's High Duke split. Uh, over there, which is a very kind of historic team. Again, just to reiterate, Fabrizio Romano did give the here we go. The medical is going to be completed, I believe, next week, uh, everybody. He is going to be here on a two-year contract for £6 million. And that just quickly, just to show his awards. I mean, these are this is not even everything on the Wikipedia page. This is just a few things that I pointed out here. Two Bundesliga titles, uh, three DFB Pokals, which is the German kind of domestic cup. Uh, the Champions League, he's won a Champions League, he's won a Serie A, and he's won a Coppa Italia uh, as well. The guy has won plenty across his career, and he's also played in a World Cup final as well. But Dave, thoughts on Perisic? I mean, this guy has seriously been a household name probably in uh, world football for quite a bit of time, and now he's finally over at Spurs. No, look, I'm absolutely buzzing with the deal. I do think, first of all, Jack, it's a sign of Tottenham changing their ways. If it was Daniel Levy still making the signings, we would not be getting in a 33-year-old. So this just shows to me that, first of all, and most importantly, it's a Conte signing and we are back in our manager. Um, I think you sold him short on the honours list, Jack. I counted eight. He does <laughs> actually have 10 to his list. I know you did say so you didn't put everything on there. Um, but look, Jack, most importantly, he's, he, he's a proven winner. He's ready to go. He's already played under Conte in a Conte system. He, a, a Conte regime as well, so he knows exactly what to expect coming into Tottenham. I'm very excited about seeing him linking up with Sonny down that left-hand mm -hmm. side. He's um, he's not a player that you have to develop or work on. He's already at the technical ability yeah. that we need coming in. And for me, I just think it's a it's a win-win situation for Conte. It's a win-win situation for Tottenham. And the reason why I think it's an even bigger win for Conte, Jack, is because he can be his inside man in the dressing room. If he wants to filter in through little messages or he wants to know exactly what's going on in that dress room, how players are feeling, etc., etc. Perisic is his in. The value, the, the, the experience that he's going to bring as well is absolutely invaluable to some of the younger players. But also, if we do make a final next season or we are on a league um, title chase next season, the value and the, the experience he can bring to the likes of a Kane, a son on how to prepare for these big games, how to not let the nerves... Uh, get to you is absolutely uh, crucial. I just think it's a win-win all around. Yeah, I agree, Dave. And uh, just quickly, just, you know, I don't know if I can add much else to that. Maybe just wanted to say, everybody, his youth career was over at uh, High Duke Split. I think he also played for a French team in his youth career. I think it was like Rochelle or something like mm. that. Uh, but he's played for a variety of teams across his career. He's played for Club Brugge. Uh, he's played for Wolfsburg over in the Bundesliga. He's played for Inter Milan for a long time. Of course, won a, uh, won a title as well as I think it was a treble even. Uh, over at Bayern in that loan spell that he had. Yeah. He's played for a variety of teams, known as one of the most two-footed players of his generation, if not still in world football. Uh, people say he's a right-footed player. I'll be honest, whenever I've watched him at times, you could be easily convinced he's a left-footed player with how much he does with that left foot. I'm not kidding. Either hitting the ball for a goal, you know, striking a ball for a cross, whatever it may be, the guy is deceivingly two-footed, like incredibly two-footed, in fact. So I think that's just another thing 
uh, we just need to bring up. But maybe we'll talk about some stats, you know, maybe just talk about the most recent season he had over at Inter Milan, everybody. Uh, in the 21-22 uh, season in the Serie A, 35 matches played. So for a 33-year-old, being able to put in 35 matches as well as eight matches played in the Champions League, I'm assuming some uh, Coppa Italia uh, performances on top of that as well. The guy has played almost like a, a Hoiberg, you know, length season so far. So it really does show, you know, it is possible at that sort of age. Uh, eight goals and six assists in the Serie A, one assist in the Champions League. Uh, he is ranking really high in a lot of very kind of progressive, you know, kind of creative going forward sort of stats for fullbacks. So this is comparing him against all fullbacks in Europe's top five leagues. So not really against strikers, wingers or anything, just comparing him against fullbacks in Europe's top five leagues. He's in the top three percentile of anything that comes to shots, any shot on goal, anything around the box. He is basically one of the best fullbacks in the world with that. Key passes, he's in the top five percentile there. Key passes, anything that leads to a shot on goal, passes into the penalty area. It's exactly what you want to see. Crosses, he ranks really high there, top two percentile in the world when it comes to that. 4.83 crosses per 90. Shot creating actions in the top four percentile there. Carries into the penalty area. I think he's just behind Alfonso Davies when it comes to carries into the penalty area per 90 as well. So this guy has been absolutely elite uh, in my eyes, Dave, when it comes to a lot of the stats that we've been probably asking, you know, the likes of Sassanone and Regulon to do it a lot better. In. And to be fair, they aren't really designed, you know, Emerson and, you know, Sassanone to really do exceptional in these sort of stats. But that's why we brought in Perisic, because he's the guy that will excel in these sort of areas. No, 100 percent. I mean, look, first of all, none of our, our, our wingbacks, right or left side, have these sort of numbers. You know, in terms of goals and assists, he's really going to add a lot of quality down that left-hand side. Um, the carries into the penalty area is, is, is impressive, Jack. And it's it's also something that, that you know, in games against Brighton, Brentford, stuff like that, that this guy's quality will really come to the fore. He, he would back himself to beat players, make things happen. He will carry the ball, which maybe we've asked of a regular and a session that they haven't been able to do before. Um, last season. So this guy, I think, is definitely an upgrade in the left wing back area, Jack. And I know a lot of people may have reservations about his age. But for me, Jack, and I, I was saying this last night, look, 33 is like the new 25. You know, players are playing into <laughs> the late it. 30s, early 40s, all across leagues in Europe now. And um, football has changed. The, the way they live their life on the field, off the field, the diets, the physios available, medical staff available. You're getting a lot longer out of these players. And look, all we need is just two good years out of Perisic to help get us where we want. And it, it, it's just brilliant for Conte because and Spurs fans because it's not a player like you look at Seth Young regular. Conte has had to work on them throughout the whole season. You won't have to do that with Perisic. Perisic is ready to go. He is ready to go, Dave. Uh, and I couldn't really add much more to that. So maybe I just wanted to, just for people... You know, to be both sides of the argument here, let's maybe just quickly talk about what he doesn't maybe do very well mm. in. And that is, you know, it, this was interesting, though, and because we did a big review on Dumfries over at uh, Flat Cap Bureau Talk, we saw that his passing uh, percentage was shocking. What's weird, though, is that Perisic is, is also kind of equally shocking, which makes me think then maybe that has a lot to do with Inzaghi's uh, system over at Inter Milan, where maybe those fullbacks play a lot of dangerous passes that, you know, maybe you know, forces, you know, you to give up the ball a lot, maybe forces mm. you to not look as good in terms of the stat padding, a pass completion percentage. So maybe that should be taken with a grain of salt, you know, that one, because Perisic is a smart player. He's a crafty player. I don't really think he's a guy that would try to give the ball away, you know, willy nilly. Mm. So it makes me kind of, you know, question those sort of stats there. Tackles and interception. Of course, it's not going to be very high at the end of the day. He's more of a winger than he ever has been a fullback pressures don't rank really high either in that stat either but the, Dave I mean for me it's like that's the Serie A he's 33 years old he's not really a guy that you know just you expect him to be like Emerson where he's just like charging up to you every moment like he's just that not that sort of player he's going to be a bit more cool a bit more calculated uh than I think maybe uh, the likes of someone like an Emerson would and then play, uh dribble pass he gets dribble pass once at least a game um which is not the worst it's not the it's not good either but something that maybe the risk that you take with you know the fact that he's such a forward thinking a uh, fullback 
that's what sometimes happens, you know, when you but play, Jack, play that sort of game. But I just uh, want to bring these up, Dave, yeah. just to, you know, play both sides of the argument here. See what he does really well, like we just pointed out here, and then maybe what he might not do so well. And 100%. Uh, and, and, and look, it, it, it's always good to understand maybe what he, what he's not doing so well. But for me, look, you don't last six years in the Serie A if you're no. not a good player. Serie A is notoriously... Uh, they're known for their defences. A lot of the teams do like to keep it tight in the Serie A where they can. Um, uh, uh, look, we, we, we all know the, the, the stigma around the Serie A. And, but I think coming to the Premier League will actually suit him, Jack, because it's more attacking. There's more spaces for him to play in. There's more space for him to get in behind. And, and for me, I actually genuinely do think it'll suit him. And I, I, I have no problem having an attacking option there and also keeping Sessio maybe for the defensive option because you will need both. You know, like for for instance, I if you agree. want to put Session out there for the likes of Liverpool and City games where he's done well this season, you have Perisic to come off the bench, you know, to add that bit of attack and flair or that bit of experience, that bit of know-how to be able to see out the games. It's a win-win for Tottenham. It's a win-win for Conte. And Jack, I think it's a time, um, a sign of uh, times to come. And I think it's uh, a massive change at Tottenham Hotspur. Like I said earlier, um, it just it, it, this is a pure contest sign, and it just goes to show me we are actually back in the manager with what he's asking for. So things are starting to change at Tottenham Hotspur. Exactly, it's a huge indication that Conte is being backed. It's a huge indication that Spurs are maybe changing their ways mm -hmm. in the transfer market. Let's reiterate it one more time, everybody. For Britsu Romano gave us the here we go on Ivan Perisic. He is headed over to Spurs, the big Croatian international here. The only time I'll ever be wearing red on this channel. We're getting a real legend here, someone that I've practically grown up with, I'll be honest, you know, watching football. So it is honestly a real pleasure to see him kind of sort of end his last maybe good years over at Spurs, to be fair, and see if he can help us win something. But that'll be all for now over at the Irish Hotspur. Check out Flat Cap Euro Talk, where we're going to be doing kind of a highlight reaction over there when it comes to Perisic. I definitely think people want to see David's uh, reaction to that. Uh, but that'll be all, everybody. Hit that like button on your way out. Come on, you Spurs. And in Conte, we trust. And as well, get your comments in below. Let us know what you think on this amazing bit of business by, by Tottenham Hotspur. Are we back in Conte? Are times starting to change? And will Perisic cut it in the Premier League? Let us know below. We want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, and we will be responding all day long. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go.